Okay, it's day 31, and as you can see, I have the LED light, that's 5 watts, shining directly over these four plants right over here. So, during the day, what I did was I moved that lamp over here to provide light, basically, for this hemisphere. And these plants are, aren't in great shape, so um, there's a chance that some of them might resurrect, so to speak, because now they're getting enough light, but... Uh, First I want to show you what's going on over here, with, especially with this plant and its first true leaf. So I thought of this idea of having the light shine much closer, um, you know, with only two hours left before bedtime last night. So the light was shining on this leaf mostly for two hours last night, and then I went to work. And, you know, when I came home, I shined the light on this plant for another maybe six hours. So it's only received eight hours of you know this direct bright light from a very close distance so let's measure it to see what happens so it's about one inch long and it's kinda of hard to judge but it's uh, slightly over 13 16 of an inch wide so there's definitely been growth for this leaf in the last 24 hours it grew maybe 1 16th of an inch longer and 1 32th of an inch wider the other thing to notice is that the second true leaf is starting to grow and the shoot apical meristem is busy generating a third leaf and a fourth leaf in the future and so on. So these are the other two beneficiaries of my new policy. In fact all the plants are because with the light aimed so high uh, before for most of the experiment basically these plants weren't getting enough light so everything was languishing and that explains why as you can see the plant on the left here the first true leaf is kind of withered around the edges so that's what happens you know and this still has a leaf caught under the other plant but um this other plant on the right you know its cotyledons are just folded up but they seem to be developing reasonably well so i think these plants will do well from now on uh they're newer so they haven't had their stems you know, the stem root juncture kind of collapsed by the isopropanol springs because they were still in their seeds back then. So I expect a lot of growth uh, in the coming days. And in my opinion, these have gotten significantly bigger over the last few days. Because of the last flooding, essentially, a lot of seedlings suffered. They fell down and this one, uh, the cotyledons are basically dying. I'm sure that it wasn't getting enough sunlight, so that was another problem. But uh, many other you know, saplings, uh, I mean seedlings, have fallen down and the upside down ones are basically done for. Here are some seedlings that have fallen down during the last watering and will probably have a lot of trouble getting back up because of the stickiness of the wet soil. But the soil is drying out and as long as they don't overwater in the future, uh, this won't happen again. And these will probably thrive with my new... Uh, light policy where I'm dividing half of the time of the lamp between sides of the bowl. This was the first seedling to germinate and now it's dead. Um, it's basically like a rotting vegetable in a garbage can. It's wet and you can see either mold or mildew or whatever that is growing all over. I had the double seed husk and this died basically due to the isopropanol. So there is some new growth and new hope. If you look at this one, it's isolated in the bowl and it has a very fat root system going in, so it probably has a very good future just based on the thickness of this root. And you know, I've already made all these mistakes and I won't be making them again with this plant, so if anything, I just want at least one or two good plants to succeed. You know, one is really all enough, and currently I think it'll be the one that has a true leaf that I've been measuring. As for the soil itself, it's very wet, but it's not completely sodden and, you know, just soaked and flooded like it was before. So it's day 32. So as you can see, this true leaf is still doing good. Let's take some measurements. So depending on how you measure this, there's a certain degree of subjectivity. It's still an inch long. And I would say at this point it's about... 14 sixteenths of an inch wide so there's been some growth it got a little wider but uh, of course if the leaf is sort of folding up then you know 
that could throw off the measurements a little bit and I'm not going to try to flatten this thing out but uh, over the days it should definitely get bigger I think we've seen a few sixteenths of an inch in both directions in terms of progress so that's pretty good and if you look over here so as you can see the cotyledons are continuing to die off and the browning and withering is uh, approaching almost the base of the leaves so I think this is part of the plant's genetic program like all other plants to just get rid of the cotyledons and recycle the nutrients so if we look over here there's uh, the plant on the right is doing well but its cotyledons are still bound by that seed husk and dirt but this plant to the left it looks like it's not doing too well you know the cotyledons are dying at an accelerated pace and the first true leaf was somewhat dying but I think with all this uh, LED light shining on it it should start growing so a quick look at the rest of the plants on the other side of the bowl shows that um, things are quite stagnant um, except for things like this seedling here uh, with the seed husk attached. That one you know, um, is growing normally. It just sort of fell over during the last watering if you go back and revisit the footage. So there's not much reason why these plants shouldn't thrive. Uh, the water levels receded quite significantly. In fact, the easiest way to test the water levels is to tilt the bowl. So there's still no water appearing, free water at the end. It's getting maybe a little moist. Okay, so we finally see some water starting to gather there in the bowl and look at the degree to which this bowl is tilted. So if you look at the bottom of this bowl there's a, a lot more roots than there were before. I'm not so sure that all these still belong to living plants. Uh, some of these just might be soon to be dead roots that belong to seed, seedlings that withered away. So for the plants that I'm sure are dead I started curling them inside the bowl. There's no point in having everything hang outside of the rim of the bowl. Uh, here's another good example. Even though honeydew plants seem to be water hogs, it seems that overwatering can kill them. And this seedling is a good case. It's basically just uh, like a rotting vegetable at this point. So here's a seedling that's kind of a weird case. It uh, germinated and then it has this tiny root that's uh, sticking along the underside of this seed in the center and can't seem to find its way into the ground and establish itself. Likewise here's another seedling that just stuck out a very long and thick uh, root system and can't seem to establish itself. So unless there's something else going on um, I know this uh, root system seems to be sort of greenish but uh, definitely the root system should be the one coming out first and the cotyledon should always be inside the seed. So I think this one might be a goner. So here's another example of something gone wrong. Uh, the cotyledons have split apart at the wrong side. So I think spraying Lysol might in some ways uh, be dangerous. I'm not sure yet, but maybe it's killing off these seedlings. I mean, it basically looks, this plant looks disconnected at the cotyledons from the stem. So. I'm sure this is going to die. But here you have two seedlings that are doing fine despite being sprayed by said Lysol. So I think it's mostly either, you know, just rotting due to overwatering and having an environment that's, you know, 100% humidity for so long. Or it could just be there's uh, mold killing some of these plants. So here's a curious example of a plant that's seemingly upside down and it's in the center it has this very very thin root that sort of connects to uh, the soil eventually and gets a little fatter so I'm not sure what's going on but you know these roots don't seem to be doing very well uh, secondary roots too you know when they're just exposed to the air they just become dry and thin like that or stop growing and expanding in that direction it's day 34 I didn't take any footage for day 33 uh, not that much has happened I'd say it's slightly like over one inch, slightly over 15 sixteenths of an inch. So the two cotyledons for this plant are mostly dead 
And there's definitely been growth as I've been measuring over the last few days since I switched my strategy to have the LED light that's 5 watts be much closer to the bowl and alternate sides of the bowl um, depending on the time of day. Uh, that increases the light input for all of these plants and uh, the second true leaf is still developing. It's not getting brown or fraying at the edges and you know, the shoot apical meristem seems to be doing fine too. So let's see if you can even see it here. So yeah, it's kind of lost within all that fuzziness. But uh, this plant is doing nicely and you know the leaf is getting bigger. I know it doesn't seem like much when the leaf gets bigger by one sixteenth of an inch in either direction every day or you know maybe half of a six, one thirty tooth of an inch but as the leaf gets bigger the surface area increases uh, increase um, geometrically so you know when this leaf reaches say two or three inches you know one sixteenth of an inch in each direction is a lot more area and that requires a lot more energy to produce so as this leaf gets bigger it'll produce a lot more photosynthesis and produce a lot more carbohydrate sugar energy for this plant to um, continue its further growth so some plants are doing well and others are not um, there used to be two seedlings here however the one on the left has completely shriveled away for whatever reason I think it may have been killed by mold or just the excess watering while the plant on the right is doing fine it can't escape that seed husk, but uh, that doesn't seem to be relevant at the moment as the cotyledons are very, very green and everything looks healthy. With regards to molding, uh, this is a seedling that failed and it has just a white tuft of mold growing on it. I'm going to try spraying the surface of all the soil here with Lysol one more time directly and if that doesn't do anything, I'll definitely just switch to fungicides. Um, I think one issue is with no UV in a synthetic environment coming from this LED light, there just isn't that natural antimicrobial action, antifungal action going on every day. So if I were to place this outside, this these plants would suffer in the cold and probably die, but at least there would be UV light coming with this intense sun. and. It would just be a few hours a day, but it would be enough probably to keep all this mold at bay. Uh, this is the problem I often have with indoor plants. So far, Lysol doesn't seem to have any effect on the plants themselves, so I'll continue with the application. You can see some more mold here. So with regards to the soil, there's definitely been a continued usage of water by the plants and just evaporation. So there's a lot more air pockets in the soil and that's a good sign you know I want continued water usage that means the plants are alive or you know I at least want the soil to dry out so it won't be so thoroughly infested with mold 